Hi Hires, we are looking at transcription, the first part of everything to do with producing a protein in the DNA and genome unit. Okay, so at NAT5 you had heard about mRNA. mRNA is your messenger that you take from the nucleus out to the ribosome for translation. But we need to know that in quite a bit more detail about how this happens. So we're going to use the process called transcription. If you transcribe something, literally you copy it. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're copying from DNA code to RNA code. They're both nucleic acids. They've both got your nucleotide structures inside. Your differences are the things like we've got a different sugar, and that makes a big difference because it means it cannot form a double strand. It can do some pairing for short stretches, maybe seven or eight nucleotides. But then once it does that, it its own shape forces it out of being able to do into a double helix. So it's a very similar set of steps for DNA replication, and you should know these. So hopefully we'll make perfect sense. OK, start off with you need to untwist the gene, not the entire thing, not the whole sequence of DNA, just the gene you want. You then want to unzip the gene, but obviously being careful in a response, you would put that down as break hydrogen bonds. OK, you then need to pair up and you're going to use RNA polymerase to do that. Obviously, because you're making RNA, you're not making DNA. And we're going to use A to U pairing and G to C pairing. OK, we don't have a T. We have no thymine as a base option in RNA nucleotides. And then you just peel off your RNA structure that you made, re-zip the whole thing up, which it will do by itself because it's all complementary base pairs and retwist it. And then you're done. Pretty straightforward. OK, so here is a pretty good diagram of what's going on inside. So we have RNA polymerase, this big orange blob. And what it's doing is doing the actual transcription. So what you've opened up here is something called transcription bubble, because it's not like you have your original, if I, well, it's like two strands of DNA, which you unzip and break open using helicase, opening up the replication fork. OK, you've not started at one end. What you've actually done is, if this is your DNA on either side, you have opened up a bubble in the middle. And that bubble will just keep moving along until it gets to the point where it stops. OK, so finding where to start, that's really difficult. Well, it's not because your DNA is very neatly organised in lots of ways. What we're looking for is something called a promoter. And the promoter is a sequence that the RNA polymerase can stick onto, recognise that that's the start of a gene, and start popping open the bonds. And when it pops them open, it produces, as I say, this bubble. And inside the bubble, in here, OK, you start to get your complementary base pairing working out. And the complementary base pairing is only going to be on one strand. So there's a coding strand and a non-coding strand. The coding strand just runs in the direction that the bubble is going. So we're not going to have to do the backwards bit. We don't need anything to do with ligase. We don't need any Okazaki fragments. We don't need anything like that. But what we have here is just one enzyme that is doing the open, the pairing, and then the closing at the end of it. So it's doing the helicase and the DNA polymerase job all in one. OK, so here's a diagram of it a little bit further on, and you can see what's going on here. We've got this is the bubble. The bubble would have started down this way. OK, and then as the bubbles moved along, the RNA has been copied on the coding strand. And these are nucleotides coming in here. And then as they're being added in, the bubble moves along. And as the bubble moves along, this RNA down here, because it does not like being in a double strand, will just start to peel off. And that means the, R the DNA will re-twist and join back up again. OK, so everything is just running along until it hits the point where it needs to stop and there'll be a code that says stop. So what you've got here, though, this is not ready. This is still called the primary transcript. It is not ready to translate. In fact, some of them don't even get translated, but we'll worry about that in a bit. But the primary transcript is not ready yet. So what we need to do is move the primary to a mature transcript. So the primary transcript has got lots and lots of sequences in it that we don't actually want to be translated. They're not coding sequence. So the non-coding sequences are called introns. The coding sequences are called exons. Now, I never liked the 
the words that they used here because I tend to think of X as being exits and therefore that would be leaving. But it's the introns that go. And so the introns comes from interrupting. So these are interrupting sequences. So the, that's where the int is coming from. So if these are interrupting sequences, then they're the ones you need to cut out and the exons are then the ones that are left. You've got to find a way to make sure you know which ones which. So what you're doing here is you're basically trying to cut out the ones that are, shouldn't be there. So if this was a sequence in the gene, so here's your gene and there's the start, start of transcription is here. So this means down here, this must have been a promoter. Okay, so on here, this sequence here was what the RNA polymerase locked onto, untwisted, unzipped, bubble ran along all the way across here. We ended up with this primary transcript. The primary transcript has got three exons. So that's three bits of coding. And we've also got two introns, which are non-coding interrupting sequence that you need to cut out. But when you cut them out, you need to stick them together. So I need exon one to join onto exon two and exon two to join onto exon three. That is called splicing. And we don't muddle up our exons. They still remain always in that order. So it'll go one, two, three, not two, one, three or anything else. And that finally is a mature transcript that we can take out as mRNA to the ribosome to do translation. Right. This is all happening in the nucleus. This is transcription.